to Lunch with Luke. This is episode two. Episodes don't really matter. I'm going to talk about something that is maybe a little relevant to what I talked about in the last Lunch with Luke, but uh, that's not to say that every episode is going to be on a related topic. Anyway, so let's think about how English works. Now, if you have a Wikipedian level knowledge of English, or even a Reddit tier knowledge of English, you probably know that English, I guess you could say, is a multi-tiered language. Okay, so we have a bunch of native English words that we use to describe basic everyday stuff. So, shoes, shirt, you know, stuff like that. Um, you know, I guess basically everyday words. And we also have, like, technical vocabulary. Now, that's not to say that um, our native English words are all daily use and we have a different technical vocabulary and it's just like one-to-one -one. but there's a general tendency for this technical vocabulary usually where we get so you know let's say transistor carburetor um, you know transition I'm in a car so I'm sort of thinking of this stuff like that um, so our technical vocabulary comes from usually Latin or Greek other places and words like that they're longer they tend to have a different feel to them, if you know what I mean. You can usually tell the difference. You know, some people have, you know, tick, tip of the tongue states when you uh, sort of forget a word. Sometimes you'll remember, you know, you'll try to remember the word. Sometimes you remember the first letter or something. Sometimes you'll also remember whether it's one of these technical vocabulary kind of words or if it's a daily use vocabulary kind of words. Now, why am I bringing all this stuff up? Okay, again, this is basic, basic English knowledge. Now, think about how the structure of English, since we have these two different tiers, think of that, how that affects the way you think about how those tiers are divided, even if you're only sort of aware that these, these different kind of terms exist. Well, to do a comparison in other languages, you know, let's say we talked about in the last episode, ancient languages. In ancient languages, there wasn't the similar kind of distinction, okay? Um, if you look at, uh, you know, Latin higher vocabulary, it's pretty much the same kind of stuff as the lower vocabulary. Obviously, all of it's from Latin. They borrowed some words from Greek, but that wasn't very common. And their technical terminology us usually ended up just being everyday words repurposed. So if we have, you know, if we have car parts in English, you know, carburetor, you know, transition, stuff like that, we would have native English words for that kind of stuff. Now, if you're curious what this would look like, there's a cute little poem out there. It's called Uncleftish Beholdings. It's by Poole Anderson, or Paul Lander, P-O-U-L Anderson. And uh, it's basically a, a little, it's Uncleftish Beholdings is supposed to be atomic theory. And it's really uh, an English text on something technical written only in English words interesting to look at. But why am I bringing all this stuff up? Now, how does this affect the way that we, as English speakers, or other people who speak other European languages who have something similar, or even languages like Japanese, for example, where, you know, they have slightly different derivations of technical terminology, or some, some they borrow from English. How does that affect the way we think? Well, it affects the way you think because it really enforces it reminds you in the fact that you're using different words with even different intonation. Um, it reminds you of the difference between technical terminology and non-technical terminology. And that's a very starkly divided area. Whereas if you speak a language, you know, if you speak ancient Greek, Greek or, you know, Egyptian or Latin or something like this, where a language doesn't have a stark divide between those two things, well, you don't really, um, it's not like you turn on a, a different scientific mode of conversation. You know, you're just talking in the same language you always use, and you might use an everyday term to refer to something that's technical. Now, if you want to be a, uh, if you want to take that a little further, another way to think of that, I mean, take, take Greek for an example, ancient Greek, okay? So, they had uh, a pantheon of gods, and, the, you know, there's Zeus and Aphrodite and all the big gods that, you know, have their own proper names. But they had a lower pantheon of gods, which really were named after abstract nouns and nothing but it. So, for example, 
Hypnos was the god of sleep. And the word hypnos in ancient Greek literally just meant sleep. Or in Latin, you know, Fortuna was the goddess of fortune. Also happened to be the literal word for fortune. Now, it, if you can go through the whole language, really what it comes down to is all the abstract nouns in some sense or another were deified. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that there is no separate technical vocabulary. There's not like an everyday, there's not like a basket of everyday words, and then there's a basket of, you know, metaphysical words. There's no such thing. So for people who speak a language like that, it's often easier for them, I mean, we think of it as thinking metaphorically. They just think of it as thinking, okay? Um, we have this like autistic division between things that, uh, you know, again, it's a Reddit tier distinction between, um, you know, sort of, uh, I guess, scientific stuff and everyday stuff, as if there's a big division there, or, you know, something that could be religious or metaphysical and everyday stuff, where in a lot of languages that don't have this higher vocabulary that is prosodically and etymologically different, like we have in English, well, they don't have such a distinction, or at least such a distinction isn't beating you over the head with itself. So, so that's something to think about um, in that uh, I think, again, related to what I was talking about yesterday, there's a lot of sort of metaphysical stuff that people write or philosophical stuff that, um, you know, in some language that doesn't have this big distinct distinction, there's not a big difference between just talking about, you know, telling a myth, telling a story about some abstract noun, gods, interacting with each other, there's not a big difference between that and talking about something scientifically or talking about something uh, in the commonplace uses of the terms. And while we have this big autistic distinction between mythology and truth, they, you know, people who speak a language like this, they, they don't really have a, a technical distinction between those two things. So that's an important thing to remember. I mentioned in the last uh, Lunch with Luke that, you know, there's a book, uh, Hamlet's Mill, and they, they're proponents of this idea. I'm not quite this extreme, but they're proponents of the idea. You, you might see Varg. Varg is a proponent of this idea that basically all mythology is really just science, and it's just once you understand the correspondence between, you know, the words, scientific words and mythological words, when you read these myths, you're re really reading like, um, you know, basically scientific descriptions of the wor world. You know, everything is the placenta. Or, you know, for the guys who wrote Hamlet's Mill, you know, everything is the procession of the equinoxes. Like every story... Uh, of in the for the ancients of you know a, a usurper king or something like this, they're all actually stories of the procession of the equinoxes and you know how that all changes. So anyway, that's just something to think about. Again, um, our mentality is different than these people, and you know when you're looking at trying to understand them or trying to, uh, it's just something different. You just have to keep that in mind. So anyway, that's uh, lunch with Luke episode two. Episode 3, we might talk about something totally different, but anyway, see you guys next time.